<laughs> all right, welcome. You may all be seated. We're not going to have any songs today because we don't have a piano, and I do not think that we are good enough singers to pull this off a cappella. <laughs> welcome, everyone. Today's going to be a little bit different of a meeting. Thanks to our really interesting speakers, and we're going to give them a lot of time, so we'll just do some short business in advance. We do have a number. Uh, sorry. You can't hear in the back, make some gestures, and we will try and speak louder. I will do my best. Um, welcome, we have lots of guests today, and we also have lots of rotarians as well. If you're a guest, would you just please give a wave? Welcome. Pat McDonald here. Pat, hi. Tammy. Uh, and then Susan and Steve, um, who are guests to our club, but not to Rotary. And we also have folks from Orchid Media who are here recording this today to share it after, which is fabulous. Um, so first order of business, if your car is parked in the lot behind the fire station, please go move it. <laughs> we won't judge you too much as you get up to go move your car right now. Okay, we've done that. Um, we have uh, no anniversaries coming up, although we did have June's wedding over this past weekend. Yay. So soon we'll have an anniversary. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then Kevin's birthday is tomorrow. Yay! And that we can sing a cappella. <laughs> Happy, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Kevin. Happy birthday to you. All right, just some news for the good of the club, real quick. Um, thank you to everybody who volunteered at Waterbury Arts Fest over the weekend. It was lots of fun. We gave away a lot of lollipops um, and temporary tattoos, and hopefully there are some future Rotarians, some that might need like a, you know, some time to be adults before that, but <laughs> we'll see. Um, coming up, our next event is the Hunt for Sunzilla on September 14th. Um, bring your sunflowers to be for the largest, the tallest, the biggest head, the heaviest, and the zucchinis and the hunt for the other three monsters. John, do you need volunteers? Do you have things that you'd like to Absolutely. say? Okay. And we'll also have the sunflower seed spitting contest. Oh, yes, the sunflower oh, seed contest. Right. Is it spitting yeah, or exactly. we're talking? Yeah, it'll be back this year. <laughs> okay. We're going to spitting again. Okay. We'll be managing that carefully. Oh, yeah. Was that anti COVID, no spitting? Is that what yeah. 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 Yes. That's awesome. Um, we'll see how spitting goes. Um, and because, well, we'll have a meeting next week if you want to recruit some volunteers, but if you want to say more things, you can. Um, also, coming up, save the date September 26th. I promised you all evening meetings. I think that's going to be our first evening meeting. Um, mark your calendars. We'll talk more next week. And also save the date for November 11th, which is when we're going to have our annual turkey drive. We'll give more info as we get closer. Um, but, you know, you're marking things down on your calendar. And any other news for the good of the club real quick? No. Real quick. Um, there are sleeves of cups. <laughs> <laughs> 16 ounce to 18 ounce cups they're perfect for Labor Day weekend celebrations oh, yeah. <laughs> you, I'm sure you'll have family and friends over and if, if you don't want to keep them on yourself you can unload them on <laughs> they're good keepsakes uh, rotary emblem on one side and trap and trap and lot brewery on the other side and uh, as I mentioned before you know you can use them for a party and you don't have to trap money on the floor for it so, uh, anyway, pick up a sleeve on your way out. I hope to have an empty box to go. They're about to rewatch it. We're getting, yep. This is the last of the cups, though, right? What's that? This is the last of the cups? I'm not saying. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Any other news for the good of the club? No? All right. Gwena, would you like to join us? Come on up and introduce our very special speakers today. Our speakers today are here from Plymouth, New Hampshire. Um, Ariel and I met them when they were at the district meeting at Jay Peak. They have made now six trips to the Ukraine, taking care of orphan children, and their story just speaks for itself. So I would like to welcome Susan Matheson and Steve Ram. Thank you. Thank you, Ariel. Oh. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, um, 
there are four of us in this or in this organization. Uh, two of us are Rotarians, Alex Gray and myself. Uh, and our two partners are part of this part of this whole proposition. And on behalf of the Plymouth Brewery Club, we would like to present you with our official brewery banner so that you can oh, hang that in some place of distinction. Thank you so much. <laughs> this is a really nice banner. What's it's a fun design. Yeah, we'd like to keep it a little fun. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, to, to, to overcome all of our, um, uh, our lack of inertia. So um, so it's really great to be here. We've got many, many rotary clubs uh, speaking and telling our story about how we about how we've done this. Uh, rotary is a really big part of what we do because the, <coughs> our partners are on both sides the of the both sides of the ocean here and here and in Poland and Ukraine. Susan is our spokesperson. She will give you a very good uh, a very good overview of what we do and how we do it. So I'm going to leave it right to her having done the official stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Usually I have to get the hook out, so that's really good not to have to do that. Thanks for inviting us. Um, first and foremost, I just want to recognize the catastrophic impacts of the flooding to your community. And um, we rescheduled in order to accommodate that immediate recovery. I know it's probably ongoing for many of your members. And I just, just want you to know that we in New Hampshire are aware and send our support. We made a very small, Steve and I made a small donation to the club in, in, in support of those efforts. I always say at the beginning of these presentations that if you're not a Rotarian by the end of this presentation, you should find a way to become one. And if you are a re Rotarian, it will reinforce for you the importance of all the work you do, both locally, nationally, and internationally. The, your organization is changing the world, and we're just a very small part of changing the world for a few people. When the war started in February of 2022, um, we, all, we four people are just friends in New Hampshire. Alex Ray, Steve Rand, Lisa Murray, and I, we have coffee in the morning, most mornings, and like you do in your coffee shops, just talk about, well, what are we gonna do for the Christmas parade, and what about the dead tree on Main Street? But this day it was, have you heard the news about Ukraine, and what are we gonna do? And. We didn't know what to do. How many of you know Alex Ray, common man family of restaurants in New Hampshire? No one? Yes. He owns 20 restaurants. He started 50 years ago, just one, one, one guy. And he's very creative and very crazy. He's a great humanitarian. He's traveled around the world responding to different natural disasters and um, has worked with World Central Kitchen and other organizations, has a, um, a permanent project in Honduras, which he helps, he's the main funder of to help kids down there. So what he said was, sorry, I forgot to tell you that we are uh, a nonprofit arm of um, the Rotary Fund, Plymouth Rotary Foundation. So what Alex said is, Alex is on the far right there. He knew that everyone wanted to help, that people in America had seen the news just like us and thought, we need to do something. We need to do something, but we don't know how. And to the four of us, writing a check to some giant organization and not really knowing how much went to administrative costs, how much went to mailers and advertising, and how much actually went to the ground didn't feel so impactful that we wanted to give people a chance to really know that they're helping people in Ukraine. And so Alex said, we should go to Ukraine. Now I'm just a regular mom, never been in a war zone, and that idea was absolutely preposterous to me. But the more we talked, the more we realized that's the best way for us to understand how to, how to help. Well, Alex and Steve are Rotarians, and Steve said, well, I know, we'll contact the district governor in Poland and Ukraine. And that's what he did. So he called the district governor, we met over Zoom, his name is Peter Jankowski, and we, he speaks English, good. 
And we were able to say, hey, we're four Americans. Alex is willing to donate the first $1 million, and we're going to raise a million dollar match. So we'd like to come and give $2 million worth of support for your projects. And we're coming in three days. <laughs> <laughs> and we arrived. And when we arrived the very first night, you can't fly into Ukraine, of course, we flew into Warsaw. In a nutshell, you fly into Warsaw or Krakow, then you take the train down to Lublin, then you take a van, private car, into Zamosh, Poland, and then it's another 40 minutes to the border. That's the trip. So when we arrived in Warsaw, Peter had assembled the district governor from Ukraine himself and 16 club presidents. This was the very earliest days of the war. This is late April. And we asked them to, to give us an overview of their projects that they had started. And we all thought the war would be short. So these projects were small and short in duration and very affordable. What we know now is that wasn't going to be enough. We listened to the presentations and we thought, well, these these projects look good, these sing to us, and this is something we can support, but we want to go see them. So the next day, this is a dear friend now. This is Richard, you can't see because the lights are on, which would be great, Steve, if you could turn those lights off. This is Richard, and he runs our food program at that time. We just met him for the first, yep, both of those. He's a Rotarian at the Zamosh Rotary Club, and we are plotting out our route into Ukraine the next day. We are very nervous. We've never been to Ukraine. It's an active war zone. Lviv had been bombed within the last week, and he just looked at us and said, do you really want to do this? And I just had to say that Ukrainians are doing it every day. They're waking up every day in these conditions, and if we have to do it for a week or two weeks while we learn how to help them, we can be brave like Ukrainians. And so, indeed, the next day, we found ourselves at the border. So, yeah, it's, um, it's more than sometimes scary. It's very often scary. We speak English. The Polish Rotarians are our escorts and main pool of volunteers, and the Ukrainians don't speak Polish generally. So every communication has to go from Polish, and from Polish to Ukrainian, Ukrainian back to Polish, Polish. So it's a, it's a trick. Sometimes it gets us into trouble, and sometimes it's hilarious to go through those three. So this is us crossing a common checkpoint. This is not the border. Um, you really can't take pictures of either of these places, but we did sneak this one out of the van. So we had to figure out our lane. Like, the humanitarian aid is fix up, blown up cars, long underwear for the military, everything in between. Housing, med durable medical equipment, consumables, everything in between. We had to figure out what we could do well. And what sung to us was the children. So these are the statistics right now. About 1.8 million have crossed into kids, have gone into neighboring countries, are still there right now. Many more left and then returned to Ukraine. Right now, there's 2.5 million children in Ukraine who are not sleeping in their own beds tonight. They're either hiding at a relative's or they're in safe houses, and that's where we're going to focus is our, the safe houses in western Ukraine. And then we know that, keep in mind, that the Russians are kidnapping children, particularly in eastern Ukraine, bringing them to Russia and re-educating them, and they're lost to their parents. This was going to be our focus, these kids. 24% of Ukrainian kids have had shelling in the past year. We'll talk more about that. So how do we do it? Well, what we did was we learned that although the Ukraine had a very robust social services system for kids before the war, they've been inundated with need. They just haven't been able, their budget's going to the war. 
And so there was a lane for us to help support these children in the safe houses. We rented two warehouses in Zamosh and Chelm, Poland, which are very close to the Ukrainian border. And in it, we accumulated, those are pallets of groat, which is a carbohydrate, boxes of sleeping bags, and uh, eventually we'll incorporate generators and other support systems as the seasons change and the war change. So we started with these two warehouses and mostly food. And we also provide canned meat and some fresh vegetables or fruits and not, not very much. So we accumulate all these goods in the two warehouses. We buy everything in Poland, Ukraine, or the EU as needed because shipping anything from the United States is expensive. It takes six to eight weeks. We're not nimble. We can't respond to one safe house who suddenly needs something new right away. And there's lots of opportunity for tariffs, taxation, and theft. And so we don't ship anything. That girl is standing in front of her home. And the little bag that's by her foot has and some candy food are cut off is, is groat. And um, I just think it's miraculous that people in the United States giving us 5 or $10 in increments, mostly some very small donors. She's holding a sign that says, thanks to the Rotary Club of Plymouth, New Hampshire. It's unbelievable to me that that has happened and that girl and her family will eat today for the next few days thanks to people here in the United States and their generosity and the Rotary Club volunteers. So, so far we've shipped 10,000 sleeping bags, hundreds of generators, which is a great story because you can't find generators in Ukraine anymore or um, Poland, it's tough, and about 800 tons of food. This is a video that was made by Richard. Remember Richard, who's looking at the map? And he's in charge of our food program. Come on, there we go. Oh, we lost our Bluetooth. Speaker's worst nightmare. Okay. We're so gonna this is what we're doing there is we have arrived at a at, at, a, at an orphanage in the countryside uh, out uh, around the city of Lviv. This is Lviv. These are safe houses all around Lviv. The first day of departed on December 17, 2022. So this is a convoy oh, all volunteer we reached orphanages where a total of about 1,300 children were housed. That's Did Alex Ray. Right? Let's go. Let's go. This is downtown Lviv. We delivered about 20 tons of food. 22 power generators, 1,000 sleeping bags, These are all and 1,350 Christmas presents. It was Christmas, so we did great Christmas presents, junk food. The aid that Rotarians provided to Ukraine One of our was made possible by significant financial support from Alex Ray and Common Man for Ukraine, Rotary Club Plymouth, District 7850, New Hampshire, District 2231, Poland. It's about a thousand pounds on the presents For the children, more Christmas presents. Back in April 1st, we, we, we found that we could not uh, uh, figure out people from the United States how to help over here in Ukraine. And so we figured out a way to raise money. We, our company, uh, 
put up one million dollars, and they they will double that. And we came up with two point four million dollars in six uh, in the six months, and and that that money comes over here when we worked with the local um, Rotary to receive our, our money, and we came here, this is our third trip. So we uh, came here to um, say, what do you need and how can we help? So we had six projects, or orphanages, a blood mobile, uh, food is the big one, that was each week 20,000 uh, dollars per week for both Poland and Ukraine and uh, the people here distributed it from Rotary and we just m m gained the funds in the United States and brought it here. Continuation of this aid will depend on the funds we receive from our partners in the U.S. and donors. We are convinced that our aid must reach as many this is orphanages in uh, Ukraine as possible. Mayor of Lviv's office. This is kids unloading food into the basement of their safe house in their storage, storage area. So you can see that there's a full range of safe houses from some that have full facilities like that last where they're singing and others. The thing about the safe houses is because the Russians are kidnapping the kids, all the safe houses are closely kept secrets. They're scattered throughout the landscape. They're not, they're not published addresses. There's no sign. But the um, great advantage we have is that because of our rotary connection and because we've been doing this now for pretty much the duration of the war, we have a close relationship with the military. The military is running <coughs> the government now and these safe houses. So they provide us with the address and the census of all the safe houses on the landscape. Um, they also have a couple, we also support a couple of what we would think of as senior refugee centers. These are, this particular one is in an abandoned Russian military barracks in the Carpathian Mountains. It's not a place you'd want to put your parents. It's pretty rough. And there wasn't enough food. And this gentleman is unloading his food into the kitchen of this senior center. It's a picture that breaks my heart. It's like the girl in the apartment building. It's like, it's tough. It's a tough spot. But we're able to walk away knowing that they have food for about 40 days, and we have delivered two generators and sleeping bags. OK, so we picked our lane, which was kids. And we decided the three-pronged effort would be food, warmth, and love. So you've heard about our food distribution system, all done by Rotary volunteers. 20,000 pounds a week goes into Ukraine, into various safe houses all throughout from Zaporozhye to the west. We have food going into a little bit of Dnie the Dnieper region after the, uh, the dam was burst, but pretty much we focus Zaporozhye west. So we had food, and then as the season had changed, at the beginning of the war, it turned into fall, and our, we faced our first winter, then we turned to sleeping bags and generators. But the last of our three prongs was love. And what we noticed was these kids were suffering horrific trauma, of course. And so how could we help? 
So the first thing was, the gentleman on the far left, his name is Michael Scoop. And if you think about how your rotary funding has far-reaching effects, this gentleman had been a student exchange, rotary student exchange in Santa Monica, California when he was a high school student. He came to us and said, my dream is a trauma counseling center outside of Warsaw for the children of Polish refugees residing in Poland. And sure enough, we have created this facility now for 50 children at a time and provides trauma counseling in a daycare facility. So we teach the kids coping mechanisms to deal with their trauma of being refugees in a country where they can't speak the language. We give them a little bit of Polish lessons, yoga, meditation, and that kind of thing. And then in the evening, we provide free legal support and coping mechanisms for the parents. So the legal support is, I fled my home without my passport, my marriage license, the title to my house, and my bank accounts. And we provide attorneys to help these Ukrainians in Poland resolve some of those complex issues. We work with the grandmas and the moms so that they can not integrate in a way that we expect them to become Polish citizens, but we'd like them to feel more comfortable. We want the kids to feel comfortable in the schools in Poland. And so we do offer um, an exchange of cultural traditions between Polish and Ukraine, and also Polish lessons. We can, I, have you, anybody here speak Polish or Ukrainian? It's an unbelievably complex. We've been there, uh, both of them are languages, and of course, Ukraine is in Cyrillic, so we're hopeless without. <laughs> <coughs> okay, so 50 kids in the suburb of Warsaw is a drop in the bucket. We knew we had to do more. So we expanded a previous exist existing rotary program that had been very small that had risen after the war in Crimea and we've blown it up. And what we do is we take the rotary clubs in Ukraine, find for us 30 to 33 kids per month that have lost at least one parent and very often a parent and an older sibling in the war. We work with their guardians, mothers, grandmothers, aunts, whoever's there taking care of these kids to assemble their paperwork. We bring the kids to Lviv. We put the kids on a bus and we take them into the Tatra Mountains of Poland. So that's a map and inside each of the little districts is a dot where that kid lives. And so we try to blanket the entire country of Ukraine with kids. And we're creating a network of kids that have had some trauma counseling, and we're also growing young Rotarians, just don't tell anybody that. <laughs> These kids come. The reason they come is for trauma counseling. What they get besides that is hiking, they get to play, they go to water parks, they go to Krakow, they get tours, they go to the Ukrainian embassy while they're in Krakow, meet the ambassador. Wonderful experiences but they also create networks with their peers. They also get to talk to another child who lost their dad in the war. They get to compare notes, they connect. These kids all have smartphones. They now have a network of 33 friends that know what they're going through as they face the future. We see these kids also as the kids that will be rebuilding Ukraine someday. And we want them to understand not only that they will survive and their life will be good, just different from what they anticipated, that Americans care about them and that they're loved and supported. And that's the third reason we run these camps. So three weeks on, the staff gets a week off, we switch up the staff, three weeks on. So kids come for three weeks and go home <coughs> and we start again. We've been doing this for 10 months now. The trauma counseling is horrific. We listen to stories that just rip your heart out of kids who've lost everything, kids whose dads, we haven't heard from him since May. He was in Bakhmut. She knows, she knows, 
but she can't face it yet. We have kids who have come and during art therapy, the first painting is black. It's a picture of black. And working with the, the therapist and creating friendships, we can't fix the loss, but we can help them through it. And so when that kid comes later, two weeks later, with a picture of his pet rabbit, Sonia, we know we've made some progress. And that's where we do it. <clears throat> Alex is a restaurateur, so everything he does is through the lens of food. So of course, we brought all the kids aprons with come in Ukraine logos and um, we asked them what they wanted to cook that night and yeah. The boy on the left had lost his dad and his father within the last two months. Previous two months. We get them out into nature. When we were hiking with this group, uh, it was a wide, as you can see, it's a wide like road, gravel road. And all of a sudden I'm in the back and I can hear the kids spontaneously singing the Ukrainian national anthem as they're hiking up this road. It's pretty, uh, one of those moments you want to freeze in time. This boy had his 16th birthday while he was with us. And I'm a mom and I just thought, you're almost 18. And how sad that was to think what happens if this war continues to this young man. In every safe house that we visit, everything <laughs> is about food. And Alex, of course, can bridge all worlds with a broad smile and another serving of borscht. We've eaten a lot of borscht. <laughs> this is Rotary at work. This whole thing depends on Rotarian volunteers in Poland going into Ukraine, meeting Rotarian volunteers in Ukraine, week after week after week, taking their personal time for days. It's many days to go all the way to Zaporozhye driving from Poland. And these Rotary volunteers take time away from their families to feed children they'll never know. I'm so moved by their generosity, and I also feel such a responsibility to continue the work here, fundraising, to help them provide the food into Ukraine. The far left is Victor. He's our Ukrainian contact to find the kids who've lost a parent for our tra residential trauma counseling program. We call him King Richard the Lionhearted. We've met before. Richard runs our food program. And that's Arthur. He's our procurement officer when summer turns to fall and it's a war and you know you've got cold kids with no heat. We said we need 10,000 sleeping bags, go find them. And that's what Arthur does. He finds whatever we need, wherever he can find it in the EU usually. That's Alex Ray and of course Steve. This is real rotary work start to finish and I just I'm not a Rotarian and I just have to say thank you for your network of humanitarian heroes. We're working huh? on that part. My <laughs> 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 off times. <laughs> so how do we do it? We do it with gifts large and small, mostly very small three five dollar bills and an envelope from a convent in New Hampshire. This is Robbie. Robbie went viral in the Boston TV circuit because he sold these cardboard uh, pieces of art around his school and he sent us a check for $48. But the great thing is when that story ran in Boston, how many donations we got from people who said, I saw Robbie, here's my 200 bucks. It was amazing. So Robbie is changing the world. We've turned him into a minor celebrity, meeting the governor and all that in New Hampshire. And uh, he's he's a he's a leader. He's a future leader. The little yellow duck story is one I have to tell every time because what we say to people, I get emails every day. I have got clothes. I've got sleeping bags. You know, I want to donate, and you just can't. You can't ship them across the ocean. You just can't get them to Ukraine to a place they're needed. You just you got to be on the ground, buy it locally, get it fast. But <laughs> Alex has all these restaurants. 
and in one restaurant a box arrives and inside this box there's 20 animals like that duck <laughs> that duck there was a dog there was an elephant there was a dinosaur and in it was a note written in the handwriting of a person that you would think would be quite elderly, very shaky handwriting, and it said, my heart hurts for the kids in Ukraine. I don't have enough money to pay for my utilities, but I do have yard and I know how to crochet. Will you make sure that these hugs make it to the kids in Ukraine? It was the first thing I had. And sure enough, here we are in a safe house with a kid who doesn't know if dad's still alive, doesn't know if mom's okay, doesn't know if she has a house to go home to, a school still standing, or how her community is. But in this moment, Alex is sitting there giving her a stuffed animal, a broad smile, and some love. We can't fix it all, but for this moment, for this girl, we made a difference. It's not easy, it's scary, bombs, air raid sirens, all that, and when you're in a war, you don't plow the roads. This was during the Christmas come where you saw the video. Now remember, we're going to a safe house that's not identified on a map, right? You have to find it, it's not got a sign to it. All, when you're in Ukraine, they've moved the road signs like they did in World War II, so the Russians can't find their way either. So it's very complex. Well, we also fell into the ditch. Two trucks in the ditch. Perfectly dark landscape because there's no electricity. You can't see, are there any houses out there? Is there any place to go to get help? No, but they could see our headlights. And magically from somewhere, people came. Cars and trucks and ropes and pulled us out. So is it easy? No. But what Alex says is, we'll do it as long as the kids need us. This is what we've done with your contributions. Rotary's contributions, contributions from over 3,000 Americans who care about kids in Ukraine. We've made some mistakes. We're not uh, experienced <laughs> doing this in a war zone, and so we funded a project or two that we might not have had we the hindsight that we have now. But generally, the, the big thing we do is food into safe houses and orphanages, trauma counseling outside of Warsaw, and our residential trauma counseling. We also uh, bought uh, early on a blood mobile. This is before we kind of had known where our lane was, what we were going to do well. Um, that was $200,000. You'll see at the very bottom a big number, um, generators and sleeping bags, half a million, um, the 355 for the residential trauma council, and then a big number, $350,000 in a discretionary fund. Remember Peter Jankowski, the first Rotarian we met by Zoom and said we'll be there in three days? He's now not the district governor, the murder year has changed, but he's still in charge of interacting with our program. The current district governor has said, you're expert at this, you know Alex and Steve, Susan and Lisa, you should continue managing this program. We give him $350,000 a year to change people's lives instantly when the need arises. A kid needs dental work. Don't call us, get the kid what he needs. A kid needs a ride to a doctor. A family needs suitcases because they finally found a relative they can live with in France. Get it to them, don't talk to us, get it done, make it work. And that's what that money's for. He's very careful with it. Like, we'll get an email sometimes saying, I have this request, but it's $5,000. You know, like, are you okay with it? Um, we trust him implicitly. It's important that this um, money is fast and available, and so it is. I hope I've communicated that we're responsive to the kids' needs, that we're trying to do everything we can to have the goods ready and available as soon as they need it. The partnership with Rotary is the core of this whole project. Not a single truck would move without a Rotarian at the wheel. And finally, we have the receipts. Steve is our uh, treasurer and... Um, they didn't bring the box. 
<laughs> and, you know, he's the treasurer of the little foundation, Plymouth Rotary Foundation, has been for years. He's been the treasurer of the club, you know, but all of a sudden he's a treasurer of $2.8 million going to an international project. It's no small feat. We're all volunteers. I just got to give a shout out to the guy who does have the receipts. You can see we've been the. The media has been very kind to us. We're trying to bust out of New England and reach out to other places around the United States. Um, CBS Evening News did a piece us, uh, with us. Um, this is outside Kiev in a little town called Jitomir. Um, we've been in some other great places. So, Our food program costs about $100,000 a month, and our two trauma counseling programs cost about $40,000 a month. So together, just to keep doing what we're doing, it's $140,000 a month. We're not quite keeping pace with that. Um, we're struggling, um, but we're going to keep doing it. Because of our volunteer network, it turns out we can feed a kid for $44 a month. So when we ask people to help us, we say, you know, even a small donation, 44 bucks, is going to feed a kid, or $1,000 for three weeks for us to take a kid from Dnipro or Kyrgyzstan all the way to Lviv into the Carpathians in Poland, or Tatras in Poland, and, and keep them for three weeks and deliver them safely home is about $1,000 with the, oh, I didn't mention that. At the trauma counseling centers, we have a medical doctor 24-7 a certified psychologist and three teachers. Everybody's Ukrainian, of course, because we are very certain to communicate to these kids. We're honoring their um, status as Ukrainian citizens. We, everything is spoken in Ukrainian. The food is all Ukrainian food. That's our budget. Unfortunately, um, just this week, uh, more kids are coming out of Zaporozhia. Zelensky has asked um, all the kids from the Zaporozhia region, region to go, to get out. And so um, we're getting extra pressure to provide more uh, goods to Western Ukraine. So can you help us? Yeah, you can. You can have five bucks and stick in an envelope. That's awesome. But the other thing you could do is think about hosting a fundraiser. The important thing is you guys are each, every single one of you is a network. Every one of you has a brother-in-law or a sister or my niece or whatever who might care about these kids in Ukraine. And if you can't help, can they? And can you just spread the word and say, hey, I listened to these people today at Rotary. They're doing great things in Ukraine. I'm not in a position to help right now, or I helped a little bit. Can you help too? And just forward our website, forward our Q QR code, forward any of the 30 or 40 articles that are on our website about what we're doing and how we're doing it. Do you have a Rotarian friend in another community? We will come speak. If we're going to carry stuffed animals to Ukraine, we'll go speak anywhere. If somebody wants to hear a story. I know, by the way, you have uh, business cards on your desk. The QR code is there. Uh, it also tells you what our URL, tip URL is, uh, which is pretty uh, understandable. Uh, common man for Ukraine.org uh, tells our story. It's easy way for you to explain it to other people um, and also of course there's an opportunity to donate on that website so uh, um, one last thing I wanted to say about this last we just got back uh, four days ago from visiting our trauma counseling center in Zakopane Poland one of the things we did is ask the kids to write a letter to Zelensky so each of these 33 kids who lost a dad or more in the war wrote a letter to Zelensky about their dad, about the war, and about their dreams. And they were amazing, heart-wrenching letters. And some very funny. I can't wait to get an iPhone 22. <laughs> I want a Lamborghini. 
<laughs> they're kids. Like, that's the crazy thing. Like, they're carrying this amazing weight, this weight that would crush any of us, and yet they're eight years old. They have an app on their phone that tells them where the act of bombing is every single day, real time. They click on it. They get lists of who's been killed. Their dad showed up on that list once. It's unbelievable what these kids are carrying around at 8, 10, and 12 years old. These letters were compiled into a book. They were presented to the ambassador um, from Ukraine. They are headed to Zelensky. The rotary emblem is all over this book. The rotary signature, your generosity, and these kids' dreams will be on Zelensky's desk. Pretty exciting. Any questions? Journalist. Um, if you have little kids and they need a t-shirt, they're not for sale, but by donation. It's got our logo on the back. It says Team Up Together. We took uh, a little theater group over from the U.S. from Plymouth State University and did a little production over at our Trauma Counseling Center. This artwork was done by kids in our Trauma Counseling Center. There's a, you saw the aprons and the pizza. There's an apron and um, <coughs> Fisher Cats minor league baseball team in New Hampshire donated two games to us uh, so far, and we've got some cats left over. But mostly we share our story and just be grateful for Rotary and the things that's doing to change the world. Thanks. Yes. Um, first of all, I've, I've been a Rotarian now for 40, over 40 years, and and this this has moved me this presentation and uh, Thank you, sir. Rotary International how does Rotary International fit in either financing or assisting you in contacts and, and what we um, we got a $25,000 grant from Rotary um, the Rotary grant process is arduous <coughs> and slow we have not gotten any other financial assistance. We were in the Rotary Magazine in the March issue of this year. They did a great spread on our work and we are very grateful. We have, everything else is not Rotary fun. I don't know a more graceful way to say it. It's arduous and, and long. And those kids need the money today. We can't wait. We will be submitting a book. So there grant. are, you right. know, as you may know, there are special Rotary Foundation funds for relief. Uh, there are two. There's one for Ukraine and there's another one for the Turkey uh, the Turkey situation. So uh, what happens is uh, Rotary, you know, they collect the money. They have $13 million donated for Ukraine. <coughs> and then, um, you know, there's politics <laughs> in everything, including Rotary. And, uh, you know, we have 220 different countries that are represented in Rotary. Every one of them as a project that they think is really important. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, so what Rotary's done is they've, they've allowed $25,000 for every district. I don't know how many districts there are in Rotary, but a lot, of, a lot of districts. And that actually sucked up all the money uh, uh, just at $25,000 per district. I'm sure our district, your district, Oh, you're in ours. Okay. Yeah. Well, our district, we got the twenty-five thousand uh, to, to help with our our program. Uh, but uh, in some of the districts that are in area of Ukraine and the countries around it, got two hundred thousand dollars each. Uh, so that's a little better. But this money went all over the world to help people. It didn't go into Ukraine, right? The the thirteen million that they raised. Yeah. Of the thirteen million that actually went into the About soil of Ukraine, yeah. went into Ukraine. The rest of it went to clubs that were helping Ukrainians outside of Ukraine, which is very good. That's wonderful, but it's not doing what we wanted to do, which was get to those kids. Yes. So you mentioned that you have um, some kids at the facilities that are up to age sixteen. What's the total age range? How young? Birth to eighteen. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, birth to 18. Some of our safe houses have infants in them. And here's a crazy story. We, our Peter Jankowski approached us. Remember I said he has a discretionary fund? He said he's exploring. He doesn't know this yet if he wants to, us to support this project. 
but evidently the stress of the war is impeding the lactation of moms who have just given birth. And that there's some research that's showing and some project application that he has asking us to start a milk bank for new moms. Wow. Wow. Any other? Yes. You're in the war zone. Have right. you been in situations where you've been afraid? Yes. Absolutely. Yep. Air raid sirens, people scattering. Yes, absolutely. We're in town all the time where all the public artwork is sandbag and covered, sandbag and covered up and they're anticipating bombing at any moment. Um, this next trip that Steve and I are going to go on will be into Zaporozhye. We personally haven't been that far, but we feel super committed that it's important for us to be there be there, look people in the eye, and feel it ourselves. And um, we'll, we'll take all the identification off the vans, as you saw there. We have our convoy of Ukraine and rotary stuff all over it. We'll, we'll be incognito for that trip. But um, yeah, that's October. Anybody else? Yes. Yeah, two years ago, we did donate the $2,000 to Shelter Box. Good. For, awesome. Uh, and they were put into Poland because they couldn't go directly into the Ukraine. But yeah. we did try to. They're start a great things. program. Good for you. Yeah. Thank you. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. These, these shelter homes. Safe or, homes. Yeah. Safe homes. Or whatnot. Mm -hmm. When you go into Ukraine, are you bringing kids back to Poland? You're actually there doing what you need to do there and then leave. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The only kids we bring out of Ukraine is for the trauma counseling sessions for three weeks and then back. The safe houses, we're, you know, we're talking like thousands and thousands and thousands. We're, we feed like 100,000 kids. So we can't, there's no bringing them out of Ukraine. Plus they don't want to leave. Because the Ukrainians want their kids. They don't want to keep their kids. Mm -hmm. So some of the kids in these, in these and these orphanages have no parents. Uh, the, plan, the plan that they have for those kids is after the war is they're going to try to put them back with their closest relatives if those closest relatives have uh, schools available. Right. If they don't have schools available, they're going to foster them out to other real quick groups. They said the waiting list for Ukrainian adoptions is longer than the potential supply of kids. They want to keep Ukrainian kids in Ukraine. I can't tell you how moved we've been with the Ukrainian children. They are so positive. They are so strong. When Prigozhin was allegedly shot down out of the sky, we were with these kids. There was a big uproar in the dining room. We thought maybe they were going to go to Disneyland, but no. Per, they had on their phone, Pergosian was shot, or you know, killed. And these eight, 12, 10 year olds are celebrating. It's amazing. Else? Thank you so much for inviting us. <coughs> it's been a good time. ways to help is with donations, which is why Oh my god! I'm oh for you folks. Oh you said you're both going to stand in the field. Please come up. I oh my gosh! Oh, yes, absolutely. Wow. Wow, look at that. Yeah. This is amazing. That's terrific. With yeah. all you have going on. Where's the report? Bill, we need you up here. You're the treasurer. Yeah. I just, I just write the checks. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is a big checkbook. Jeez. <laughs> You have to deal with checks this size all the time. Oh, man. Thank you so much for everything that you've done. And we also always give our speakers just a little thank you pet. Oh, so when you're oh, wow. out and about, you know, everyone can always use a pet. Wow. wow. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Oh. They're very nice pets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, thank you both so much for joining us. This is fantastic.
uh, really lovely to hear. It was truly moving to hear the previous talk at the Rotary Club. Let's bring it again. I think one time said, shed a couple of tears. Um, and I think every time we hear that for a few times, we'll shed a few tears. Right. Did, uh, did people understand about these shirts? Yeah. 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 yeah, I think we're some of them after. And uh, we are going to close the meeting right now we will be closing also without song but we will be closing with the five-way test and um, for any non-rotarians this is the the four-way test or the five-way test of the things that we think say or do as rotarians so if everybody who knows it please join in number one is it the truth number two is it fair to all concerned number three will it build goodwill and other friendships Number four, will it be beneficial to all concerned? And number five, is it fun? Oh, I love that. <laughs> Good for you guys. All right, thank you all. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. If you wait just a second, I want Susan to tell one more story. Because you, you all noticed this beautiful blouse she's wearing. Yes. And when I talked to her before, she told a story about it. Um, I bought this in Lviv. We watched women in an open air market, and you just have to get this picture in your head of sandbagged artwork, sandbagged windows, air raid sirens, and a woman stitching shirts in the open air market. Hand stitched. Um, it's called a Vishivanka. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, my grandparents are from Lviv or Lviv. Yes, and. Uh, I wanted to say something, I was a little shy to do it. I'm very moved by you. <laughs> um, thank you. You're welcome. It's a privilege. We get to do it because people care. And we just get to be there. And we're very grateful for the opportunity. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's wonderful. Um, I have a small shop down in Jonesville uh, that I opened. It's a sustainability boutique. I opened it with the... Uh, you know, my, my, my motivation was uh, to redirect people's ideas about their consumer habits uh, with respect to the environment and that kind of thing. But when the invasion happened, uh, I, my, my modus operandi changed. I suddenly said, we have to do something to help Ukraine. Um, we, in the first weekend after the invasion, raised $2,000 from the merchandise in the in the um, boutique, people from the community were literally coming in and saying, I don't want to buy anything, I just want to put this money toward Ukraine. Uh, since March of last year, we've raised 34000 Wow. Yeah. So we went, <laughs> and it just comes to prove that people care, but they're not sure how to help. So I have a good friend in, uh, in Kiev who has been, she's from Connecticut, she's Ukrainian like me. She's been living there for uh, 21 years. And um, so through her, I was able to figure out how to get the money to the military. So we've been directly sending the money to the Ukrainian armed forces, uh, penny for penny. Um, and we're gonna continue doing that. Good for you. I wanted to speak, but I was so afraid I would start to cry. <laughs> anyway, it's wonderful what you're doing, Thanks. and uh, yeah, it's, it's really hard to witness that. I, I can only imagine how terrified you have to be. Um, and I say speak up, because there's a lot of people now that are uh, personalities, big personalities with a lot of resources who are going around uh, saying, no, the funding has to stop. Medea Benjamin being one of them, a very, very well-known peace activist. Uh, ben Cohen of Ben and Jerry's. No more money to Ukraine, that's it. Trying to convince the American public. I'm gonna tell you something, uh, my parents, I grew up watch, witnessing the trauma that my family suffered. My grandparents had to go to Canada, running from the Russians. We have experienced trauma of this type of genocide. This is ongoing. This has been happening for centuries. This is not since 2014 with Crimea. This has been happening. Holodomar is something you should look up. Holodomar 
it was the Ukrainian genocide in the 1930s under Joseph Stalin. The, the Russians have been trying to annihilate Ukrainians and their culture and their history and their heritage and their language, their music, their traditions, their religion, their intellectualism, everything for centuries. This isn't new. So speak up when Medea Benjamin and Ben Cohen say these things. They don't know their history. They don't know anything about Ukraine. They just have this political ideology, you know, oh, it's imperialism, it's the expansion of NATO, the United States shouldn't get involved, this kind of thing. If Ukraine loses this war, then every single one of the 15 former Soviet republics will get picked off. And there will be a new world order. It's as simple as that. That's the way the world is moving right now. We have to defend democracy and sovereignty in Ukraine. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah.